It's a big day today. Yeah, <clears throat> graduation and all that. So we're going to try to bring the guys up here, do some media stuff, uh, meet with them a little bit, then go do our graduation ceremonies, and then come back tonight and practice. So the guys that graduate, <clears throat> they don't get to throw parties and everything. But uh, this getting our practices in were important. You know, during the uh, the finals, which finals ended on Wednesday, we couldn't do a whole lot of practicing for a whole week. So we're a little behind right now. So we gotta we gotta get out there and practice. <clears throat> uh, speaking of the bull, uh, just uh, the first time we've met since um, uh, the announcements came out and all that. But just a lot of excitement in this building about going to Orlando. I, I consider Orlando one of the top probably two or three bull destinations that exist. Um, I know WVU's been down there before. Um, you know, I've been down there one other time. <coughs> um, but it, it's, a, it's a good spot. Said that last year in regards to uh, Scottsdale. Uh, but Scottsdale and Orlando, just from a weather's, weather perspective, uh, resort-style hotels, a uh, lot, lot of, a uh, lot of things to do uh, makes for a good bowl game, and then you couple it with, uh, with a great opponent in in Miami. Um, it, it, it gives you a lot to to practice for. It gives you a lot to to play for. So, <clears throat> a lot of excitement around here when it comes to that. Um, get getting right into Miami. Uh, we'll do uh, things that we the way that we've always done from a bowl game. Uh, you know we'll practice uh, our tail off here. Uh, I like to give the guys a couple of days off, uh, you know, before we report to the bowl game. You, you like to say, I'd like to give the guys a couple of days off for Christmas, but you don't control what the dates are. Uh, so, but give them a couple of days off and then report down at the bowl site and go through another weekly routine. So we'll have plenty of opportunity to be prepared for this, uh, for this game. Um, <laughs> you know, bowl game 101 is about wanting to play in the game about uh, you know not necessarily being prepared to play in the game because you got enough time to get prepared but uh, wanting to be in the game and I think I think this sets up to where both teams are gonna want to be there and both teams are gonna play really well uh, My, Miami's a, 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 a damn good football team uh, that you can say well they're eight and four that's not up to the standards of Miami but they're a couple points away from being 11 and one uh, you know Play a tough schedule. Uh, have beaten a lot of good football teams. <clears throat> One point loss to Florida State. Uh, what two point loss to Notre Dame. Uh, uh, a touchdown loss to North Carolina, and then a, a tough loss at Virginia Tech. So. Um, quality football team. Uh, Coach Rick has has been one of my. Uh, <laughs> coaching uh, idols for a, a long time. Just you know the success that he's had when he was at Georgia and then. It really goes back to the success that he had when he was at Florida State. Just always watched what he did. Uh, great football coach, great, great human being. Uh, uh, great offensive football coach. So you know, offensively, they're 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 good, just like they've always been. They, he's done the same type stuff for a long time. Now he's got some pretty good players to be able to do it with. Starts with their quarterback, Kaya. If you say that this guy's the all-time leading passer at Miami, I'd say he's pretty good. Because they've had a lot of good quarterbacks through there, um, so he's. And I could have swore he would have been a senior by now, but uh, uh, just a junior to be able to be the all-time leading passer in Miami history speaks for itself. They got unbelievable skill. Uh, they're running back the Walton kid. We recruited the heck out of him, didn't get him, uh, but he's he's a great player. Um, scores a lot of touchdowns. They give him the ball a lot. Uh, their their receivers are as good as we've seen. Um, uh, the Coley kid and then the freshman, the true freshman, Richards, he, he just broke Michael Irvin's freshman uh, receiving records. I think, I think the Irvin dude was a pretty good receiver down there. So, uh, and then their tight end's the biggest and baddest dude that we've faced all year. Uh, gives, gives a lot of matchup problems. So uh, offensively, they don't turn the ball over. Uh, they, they can score at any point. They can control the clock. Um, it, it's going to be a huge challenge for our defense. Uh, defensively, Miami is uh, is is really good. Uh, statistically, as good as that we, as we faced. The only the only team that compares to them statistically is Kansas State, <coughs> who, who statistically has, was a, was a really good defense in the Big 12 this year. Um, it, but the thing that you notice about what Miami does, it's uh, 
you know, Manny Diaz is, has been around for a while. I've competed against him for a, a long time. Uh, he, he's uh, uh, plays a lot of odd front, likes the blitz. Um, just got got guys coming from everywhere. Uh, coupled with uh, Big Cool, their defensive line coach, uh, came from Missouri, who was at Missouri for a long time. I've known Cool for forever. He's he's considered probably the best D-line coach in the country. They're a four down front, so they've kind of merged the two. Uh, which is an interesting dynamic to to, to watch, but uh, they've been very successful at it. They're well coached. <clears throat> they play their tail off, and they get better and better and better throughout the course of the season. Uh, got five or six true freshmen that play for them a lot, uh, so they're going to continue to get better. Um, they're three linebackers. You know, all three of those those dudes are all th true freshmen. I don't know if I've ever seen that. And and they're big. They six two, two thirty, two forty. Uh, run, hit, and they're true freshmen. I'd hate to play against those guys here in a couple of years. Um, you know, they're secondary wise. They're 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 great. Got another true freshman starting back there. But uh, twenty one, the elder or twenty nine, the elder kid is 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 a guy that uh, I think he's going to the Senior Bowl. He's he's a really good player. Their safeties um, compared to Oklahoma State's old. Uh, been around for a long time, big run, tackle. <clears throat> and then their front their front four is as good of a front four as we've faced. So um, uh, we got our work cut out for us uh, offensively because uh, they, they, they really, really got great team speed. They're big, they tackle, uh, and they, schematically they pose some problems as well. Uh, special teams. Um, got to got to really really pay attention to what's going on special teams wise. They the the one thing that stands out about them more than anything they block a ton of kicks. They come after everything, whether it's PAT field goal, whether it's punt. They come after it and they they get there quick. So we got to pay attention to their, their their to the blocking of kicks aspect of, of of things. Their cover guys are fast, as you can imagine. Uh, because of how they recruit and the type of recruit they get, the, the success that they have in recruiting year in and year out, they're incredibly fast. So they're big and they fast, which means cover guys uh, get down the field and, and, and make things happen. So our return units uh, have a, a huge challenge. They got solid specialists uh, with their, their kickers and their kicker and punter. Both guys are, are, are as good as I've seen. Accuracy-wise, leg strength, averaging 40, 40 yards a, a punt, and extremely solid with their field goal units. Uh, kicked a lot, made a lot, uh, and then they're they're uh, about every other kick is in the end zone when it comes to the kickoff team. And then they got speedy returners as well. Uh, the Burroughs kid, we recruited him here. He's from North Carolina. Uh, the punt return guy, he's a kick return guy as well. He's he's dangerous. He takes chances. He makes things happen. So. Uh, got it. Got our work cut out for us in, in this game. Uh, we'll we'll prep again. We had a good day yesterday. We'll prep again tonight, tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, then um, shoot over and, and watch Hugs win his 800th game, and then uh, practice Sunday morning uh, and uh, let the guys get away for a couple of days prior to getting down to Orlando to have a, a, a great week down there for our bull prep. So it should be a fun should be a fun deal down there, as we all know. At the end of the day, it's only fun if you win. So hopefully we'll do what we need to do to be able to do that. Questions? Dana, yeah, just start to see if there's any bad news going into bowls, academics, injuries, things like that, anything that's going to the, the injury aspect of it, and leave it to Coach Hunter to bring up bad news, right? Yeah, do it, sir. Yeah, somebody does. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, the 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 the. Injury aspect of things, you know, we had two weeks to heal up. As we all know, looking at Iowa State, looking at Baylor, there was there was walking wounded everywhere. So that that was a good two weeks to be able to let let the guys heal up, and we spent a lot of time down with with Dave and Mike down in the training room and the uh, the, the weight room from a recovery aspect. So that that's been good for us, it is, as it is everybody. Um, no, nobody's been ruled out. Everybody's been, everybody's good to go. Um, the long-term guys are the long-term guys. You know, academic side, we won't know. I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, Brittany O'Dell, our our main academic lady in the back, uh, is is fantastic. She, this is her first year here. Um, she's from Orlando, so she's excited about the bowl game. But uh, she did a, just a fantastic job with the guys, getting to know them and. 
and 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 getting them in the right spots, I think we're going to be okay. We may lose one, but uh, may lose one or two, but don't know that for sure. You mentioned Jalil Phillips had a chance to play. Not not going to not going to chance it. Same thing as the geese. Never said that. Okay. Yeah, no. You're worried about the time off, picking up momentum. You know, you just outlined a whole bunch of stuff that's gone on the last two weeks. Now you start to get back into game mode. Not worried about it. Excited about it. <clears throat> the the energy out at practice was was good. It's it's. Uh, it, I don't like going inside of practice, and it's. It, it, I think I'd probably get a team revolting if I tried to go out at this point. But. Uh, um, I thought speed of the game was good. We went against each other for, you know, the first uh, couple of periods, and energy was good, speed was good. Not worried about that. In your film review of Miami, they had you know four game losing streak and a four game winning streak. Did the execution actually change, or was the results more just the fact of how the schedule fell? Yeah, probably schedule more than anything. I mean, they were they were in those the, the Virginia Tech game. Virginia Tech played well. It's the first time I've watched Virginia Tech, and <clears throat> obviously we open up with them next year, so there's going to be a lot of, of, of film study on Virginia Tech moving forward. But that's the first time, because there's no crossover in any of that stuff. Anytime you go a different conference, you're not, there's not a ton of crossover. So I hadn't watched a lot of the ACC uh, this year, just like TV uh, aspect of like Notre Dame and Florida State, uh, that sort of thing. Um, Virginia Tech played really well in that game. But other than that, those other three, I mean, they could have went either way. You're talking about a missed extra point versus Florida State. Uh, they're pretty good, you know, and, and you know, uh, got down against Notre Dame. Notre Dame, I thought, played well and got down and they came back <clears throat> just fell a couple points short. I mean, anytime you're within a point or two, I mean, how many times did we win a game where it was a point or two? Everybody's sitting there saying how excited we are about 10 and 2. Well, there was four games that were decided by less than a field goal. Uh, same thing happened when we went to the Orange Bowl. I mean, there's th the last three games of the, the year were, were decided by a point or two. So, I mean, it could go either way. And, and those games that they lost could have went either way. So, like I said, that they, they could be sitting at 11 and 1, and then they'd be in the college football playoff, and everybody's tune would be in. A little bit different. Don't look at this team and say, "Well, shit, they're just they're they're eight and four, right?" I mean, good God, it's Miami and they're eleven. They could have been eleven and one. So that's the way we're looking at it. I can assure you that. I won't swear anymore, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you started, you started to get fired up there. I was acting like I was talking to our guys in here, you know. I'll give you that one. Have you seen growth though from them and mm -hmm. have, as they've adapted to the different systems? Oh yeah. Yeah, Mark Rex is a good football coach now, and they're going to continue to con improve. If you look at his bowl record as a head coach, it's good. Um, you know, he's 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 an experienced, established guy that knows how to deal with this. Uh, so they got a plan in place that, and I think we do too. From our our, our the way we've done bowl games, you know, in, in my 16 years of doing 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 bowl games, we've won some some a bunch of bowl games. So I think we got a pretty good handle on it too, but. They will continue to improve with it because he understands how to do things right when it comes to that. Uh, so we're expecting them to continue to get better. When you look at Miami, is it Georgia's stuff or is it stuff that he's doing to fit the players that he inherited from Miami? It's, it's Georgia's stuff. He's always been pro style. You know, <laughs> he's going to have a full back and a tight end, a couple wide outs, and run the ball, establish the run, you know, and then and do some all-American type route combinations and all that. So it's it's pretty similar to what they they did at Georgia. Um, you know, their OC Thomas Brown was a running back at Georgia. Um, you know, his, his son's one of the quarterback guys, so a lot of the stuff that he's been doing for a long time. I'll give you a note more. They went against them back in the 2006 Sugar Bowl or four whenever that was, 2005 Sugar Bowl. So Gibby's got a pretty good knowledge on what they've done in the past and what they're doing now. Dan, you mentioned uh, that you have, you, you've had experience with bowl teams and the likes. And how different is it to coach a bowl game and get a team ready for a bowl game than having you know four days in the middle of the week to do it? It's easier. It's, it's easier from a preparation standpoint. It's easier on the coaches. you got more time. So at the end of the day, it's about uh, – 
Uh, and, it, and there's nothing easy about it because the other team's doing the same stuff. There's other things that you got to worry about, like speed of the game and keeping their attention and separating fun activities from work activities. There's a lot of other challenges when it comes to that. But um, yeah, from a preparation point of view, it, it's a little easier when when you sit in there all day one day and you got to get everything done in one day. That 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 gets hard. Um, to where you know now I sat in there for three days to be able to get a, a game plan together, and then we can practice for three days, make some adjustments on some things that we don't feel real comf comfortable about, change some things, and then go down there and have a whole another week of preparation. So um, it gives you a little bit more time to prepare, which is is good. I think I do think at at this point in the season, obviously you kind of still are who you are. You're not going to be able to change it very much. Um, Everybody says, well, you got 15 practices. Well, you really don't. You really don't have 15 practices. And, and <clears throat> there's not a whole lot that you can do from a personnel point of view to, to really change who you are. Hard to recapture the emotion you had at, at the end of the season, though, or, or not? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. <clears throat> I, I mean, I don't think so. I think who we are is who we are at this point. You know, I think we got to... Uh, a group of guys that 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 like each other and fight hard for each other, which is why we won a lot of those close games and um, you know finished the season the right way. Uh, got got to ten wins, which is something to be proud of. But you know the next steps get to eleven. You know what's the difference in winning ten and eleven? I mean you you get to eleven. That's only been done here five times in 125 years. You know, what's it mean to get to 10? Well, it's been done now 10 times in 125 years. So there's still, there's still things that we can target to where we want to, uh, to where we want to achieve. Anybody, anybody come up that is comparable on your schedule to, to Miami, or are they just that much different from anybody you've played this year? Mm. They're, they're different. Um, you know, defensively, they they got some Kansas State to them just schematically. Um, you know, um, offensively, they do different things. I mean, they're they're more traditional. Big Twelve is so spread, and they're just not that team. You know, they they're dangerous. Their yards per play is high, but they just they don't do. They're not a typical Big Twelve spread it up tempo. Type stuff. They're they're multiple. They can do a lot of different things. It's just a little different philosophy. So yeah, not really. I mean, it's 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 a different kind of ball. Is your scout more challenging with a team that doesn't have common opponents? You can't judge a tackle because you don't know how good the guy across from him is. Is that? No, is I don't think so. I mean, it's still just video. You know, you got a lot of information on who these guys are. Um, a lot of different people have attacked them in different ways, and you can look at it and see what matches up with you. So it's easier now than it is in the beginning of the year. Beginning of the year, you don't know what you're going to get from how guys improve, from what their bodies are, from if they've made scheme adjustments. You know, like I said, who you are is kind of who you are at this point. You go back and you look at their 12 games, and you got a pretty good idea who they are. Dana, what about the, the two big receivers you're bringing back, a Sills and then the, uh, I guess, the 6'5 kid? What is that maybe going to give you on the outside next year? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for David to kind of put it to rest. And I told him, I said, go go, give it a shot, you know, and, and, and he did. And he came and he said he wanted to come back. I was like, well, we'd love to have you. Know what you know what we're getting with you. I think he's going to develop into a great receiver. Maiden is a developmental guy. <laughs> but um, to answer your question, I, I, it's gonna, it should help red zone. It, sh it should help red zone. We've got a lot of 5'9", five, 5'10", five, guys that can run pretty good right now. We need bigger bodies. You know, Kron's our biggest body. So hopefully Wesco develops and the, those two kids uh, are what we think that they can be and that will help it will help be able to complete passes in tighter space. That's our problem red zone wise right now. We're having a hard time completing passes in tight, tight space. So that, that just bringing in a couple of guys that are a little different than what we have is probably the biggest thing.